Hi guys, I'm Jace, and I go under the name of Maurice Customs on, I have a Facebook page and I also have Instagram, um, oh, the address is at the end of this video if you want to go and give me a like or just check out what I've been doing. So, today I'm going to do a full rundown on how to paint a model car. You can use this for other stuff as well, as long as you're painting plastic and you're, it's all going to be airbrushed. So I'm using the SMS system, which is developed for airbrush use. Um, I think you can do a brush too, but I'm just going to do airbrush. So they're going to paint this in SMS today. As you can see, they've got a big, massive range. If you want to check them out, Go on to his website, which is scalemodeler.com.au and have a look at all the range. And the prices are really good and he posts all over the world. So what we have is 64 Impala I'm going to paint. Here is the kit here. It's just the lowrider kit. I'm going to do it as a lowrider, but nothing fancy for this one. I have been doing a lot of intricate paint jobs and I want a bit of a break so this one's going to be basic. Um, it's going to be like white pearl on the bottom and then a jet black roof and I think the wheels are going to be low rider wheels and I might paint them as well. Something different, a bit, bit of a new school low rider. So what we need is We've got our body, it's out of the bag, it's had all the extra reinforcing cut off it. You can leave that on to sand it if you want. This is just an older body that's already been, it was painted before and I've stripped it. So all that's been cut off already. So you need the parts you're going to paint, which is uh, the body, the bonnet and the boot. We're in Australia, so this is a bonnet and a boot. And there is a back panel, but I forgot to get out the box. So, so we need sandpaper. There is, I use, this is Australia for, this is 400 for us. Um, P400, it's a wet and dry, it's black, that's how you know it's wet and dry. Um, so, I will just cut this up a bit. It's easier to have small pieces when you're doing model cars. If it was a real car, you wouldn't make them small. I'll just grab a ruler. I'll just do a little bit of this car, so I'm not going to bore you with me sanding the whole car, because that would be... I'm bored already thinking about watching someone do that. So I'll just rip this up quickly. I have another grade here. I have 360. I'll need some of that as well. I'll explain why in a second. So I'm just ripping into sizes here, squares, rectangles, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, just the ones that I want. I'm going small with the pieces because it's easier to get into the parts you need. And I'll go this one in half as well. A lot of guys use the, been using the Tamir sandpaper and stuff, and I, I really haven't tried it, so I don't really, can't answer any really questions if you have them on what grade Tamir is, because they're 400, might be 40,000 or something, I don't know how they do it, it's just weird to me. Um, okay, so, I think I'll go smaller with this bit, again. Now the, th the 360 is a fairly harsh sandpaper and I use it for, um, maybe you can see here, I'll just get in here, it's got Impala and a little Chevy badge I believe, it's got a Chevy badge here. I can't get the detail I need on those, there is guys that can do this 
technique with foil to make them chrome and they like sand the paint back off. Um, I haven't learned to do that, so I will get rid of these. With You just get your, this just sands off with, with your 360 sandpaper. So you just get in there and sand it. Like this, so it just so it's dead smooth. I don't know if I've got, if I can do this quick, I won't do it. I won't bore you with it. So just get in there and get rid of it. We don't want it. I think it gives a bit more of a custom look too. So you can see here now that's pretty much gone. I've got a little bit more in here to get rid of. So that's what this is for. And then once you've done with that, the badges you want to come in with your 400 what I do what I do with the 400 and nothing softer is when I when I do taping um, of course it's gonna be two turn this line here will be tape line and I don't want the paint and the primer to pull up with the tape so this Sanding it with 400 gives it a really good bite to um, for the primer to grip to, and you won't your paint won't peel up, which is really annoying because if you get a really nice paint job and you peel up with a little bit of tape up and it wrecks it, you got to fix it. Um, it's not the end of the world; you can fix it. It's not too hard, but anyone would prefer not to fix it. So all we do here is just sand, sand, sand. No particular style in sanding, just sand it. Um, what we're trying to do is, I'll do this with the bonnet actually, and then I'll explain what I'm doing with that. So I've got the bonnet here. As you can see, it's really shiny. I'll try and get some light on here. That's better. It's really shiny. Um, that's just fresh out of the mold. And the mold's dead smooth, so they come out like that. So what we do is we sand it. And when you're doing the body here, um, the edges are really sharp from where they come out of the mold. So just give it a light sand. Don't go crazy. You don't want to. You don't want to round them off um, because it'll take it away from looking like a real car. It'll make it more like a model, which you don't want to do. You still want a little bit of a sharp edge, but not enough to still have, like, it's kind of like flash on them sometimes. You can see around here, it's just that tiny little edge. So you get rid of that. And you want to come on, the, on this, all these lines here where the body has detail you want to try and get right into that joint to get rid of the gloss okay I think that was enough here to show you this bit I'm just going to keep this brief so you don't get too bored with it so if you see now I think that's a good angle um, it's really flat and this is shiny still. What you do is to make sure you've got all of it, just get it under a good light and just move it around till you get light going on from every angle. And you'll see anything that's not flat that's shiny, you want to make that flat. So I can see a bit in the in the join here, a little bit on the edge. So I'll just you just go in and fix them up. And then, you pretty much just have to do a good once over. Um, on these moulds here, like this here and this body line here and around these um, gutters here, you want to sand it fairly well. Don't go crazy here because you'll lose detail. Just into the edge and just a little bit on there um, because if you're going to go full detail, you're going to put foil or something on there and when you pull the foil back up you don't want it to pull the paint with it um so you want it to the paint to really stick to these bits 
yeah, so that's about it for sanding. Remember, just 400. Give it a sand. 360, just sand the anything you don't want off like these. And then once that's done, if you go over your body and you're not happy with the your body lines here, like your door jams and where your bonnet and that goes, wouldn't worry too much about this part here. Sorry, but my hands are dirty from fixing my bike all day. I wouldn't worry too much about that there because they very rarely just dis disappear. Um, so if you want them to stay and be more prominent, you just get, I just use a hobby knife just with an X-Acto blade. And I just run it down the join carefully a few times. And you can see it peeling off a bit here. Careful not to jump the track, because then you'll have to, when that's filled, you have to make sure it's sanded properly or that will show up on your paint later. So you get the idea. Uh, just be careful with this, you don't stab yourself and get stitches in your hands or whatever. So yeah, you can go around and do that carefully. Um, if you do go off the track and have a scratch, it's not the end of the world. Just sand it a bit more with your sandpaper, your 400, and then when you prime it, hopefully the primer will go in there. You can always prime it again if it doesn't fully fill it. Um, so once you've sanded that, got this down, sanded all this, got this down here, this is how you like it. Get this into a bucket of warm soapy water. I just use dishwashing liquid, just squeeze a bit over, get some warm water, just to give it a good scrub. Um, it's just to get all the mold release off from the factory because that will might that may affect your paint you don't want that and then yeah then you're ready for prime so I'll get back to you when I'm ready to prime it so yeah okay so the next step is <clears throat> I've sanded the whole body and I've got it on my painting stand here and I've taped these two sticks and just using clamps to hold them up to hold them. <clears throat> I'm just going to prime with um, this cheap primer filler. It's just an acrylic primer filler. Um, you can use acrylic undercoat as well. Uh, this is just what I've got here at the moment. Um, SMS do one as well, but I haven't had any to try. I found that this works well and I use a lot of it when I'm doing scratch building. Um, getting in when I do putty work I use this to try and get rid of some of the imperfections but it also seems to work well it's only 10 bucks so any sort of a acrylic primer filler will do and I'm just going to spray this out the can uh, I don't bother spraying anything like this through my airbrush so I don't want to wreck my airbrush okay so I'll take you outside and I'll spray this yeah, I'm just doing it outside because it uh, get rid of the smell of it. I'm just setting it on my bin here. It's a little bit breezy, but it'll do. So, give your primer or undercoat a really good shake. Bit of a test spray over here. Then I'll just go, I'm just trying to hold my camera and do this. So, just a light coat. I'll spin this around. Just make sure you get everywhere, especially under. I just go dust coat and then I'll go for another coat now. Don't worry about things getting it at this stage because they sand out. Just make sure you get everywhere. That looks about right. I've covered it all. So I'll let that dry for a few hours, then I'll sand it and then I'll get back to you. I'll just go and prime the rest of it now. I don't think you need to see that. 
Okay guys, so I've now let the primer dry and I've given it a wet sand with P800. Um, I'll just put it under the tap and let the water dribble on it and give it a wet sand. Now I'm gonna use um, a tack rag. The best ones are the blue ones. I just can't get them locally, so I had to grab this one. It's a bit sticky. Um, I'm not pushing it, I'm just letting it brush over. It's just to get any dust or anything on there that may have gone on there since I've sanded it. We'll do these parts as well. Now, now is to do the base white colour. I'm using premium white SMS. This stuff is pretty much out of the bottle into your, into your airbrush and years. Um, I tend to thin it slightly. I'll show you when I do the pearl because it's all pretty much the same consistency. It all depends on, um, SMS do a really good job in getting it at a nice consistency to airbrush with, but unfortunately, not everyone uses the same airbrush. So if you use a 0.3 mil, it's gonna be too thick for that. Or if you use 0.5 mil, it's probably really good. Um, so they can't really, they can't really judge what you're going to use and how exactly how to mix it. So you might have to thin it slightly if if you can't just spray it straight from the bottle. Um, it's not. It's a good way to test. I'll show you in a sec. So I've already got my airbrush with white in it. Turn my compressor on. I'm not sure how much pressure I'm running. I because my gauge doesn't work for using my airbrush compressor. Um, I'm thinking maybe, feels like about 20 PSI. So I'll just paint now. Yeah? You just, um, doing lines, I'll start from the bottom and then go all the way around the body, bottom of each side. And just, I'm just gonna make sure this is I might have to mix this a little bit, seems a little bit dry. So I'll just put a little bit of thinner in there. Then I purge. Purge, I mean, they put your finger over the end of the airbrush tight, and you pull the trigger down, and you pull back just slightly, and then you get little bubbles. Pull back, I mean, a fraction of a millimeter, and the bubbles will mix it for you in the pot. And that sounds like a spraying better now. So here we go. Just backwards and forwards. Like that. Just keep a nice even speed when you're going. Don't forget to end them here. Um, actually, I'm going to grab something here. I should have done this before I started, but I'll just grab that glove so I don't get paint all over my hands because it does absorb the beer skin. So, where was I? Um, I'll do the roof. Each time when I do a, a row that way, I come back and I kind of um, spray over it about halfway. It's called a 50 percent fan or something. I think they call it in the spray world. And now I come in and make sure all the all of the jams I've got some paint on them. So that's one coat. Then I'll match it with this.
this is wobbling around everywhere, so I'll just put it down here. Like that. This is a solid colour, so it's not really important if I do the same amount of coats as that, because it's all going to be roughly the same in the end. So I'll just... some of this also if you leave this I've probably left, left this with the lid open if you leave it with the lid open the um, solvent evaporates from it and it goes, it goes thicker so try to put your lid on every time you pour it out it'll keep it factory fresh There we go with that. I'll do the edges. You should have a mask on when you're doing this. I haven't because I can't talk to you with the mask on. And then by the time you've done that, you can come back to this. And because I'm going to have a black roof, I'm only going to leave that one coat on the top like that. This time I'm only going to come up to um, just over this edge. This, back to the pause. Again, just to that edge there. Going a bit slow with this coat. The first coat you can go quite a bit faster because you just um it's called like a tack coat. Um, it's to get adhesion to the primer and to your next coat will flow into that first coat. So I've got to hold this weird. Like so. Underneath these panels, I'm gonna have to come back and um, do another coat because there won't be any paint where the tape is, unless I do something on there. So that's two coats. I might just um, put a little bit more in here. This is definitely thin, thickened up, unfortunately. It's a good lesson to leave the lids on. Okay, so one more. This is just a double, just to make sure it's definitely covered everywhere. As you see, I've only come up slightly on this for the two-tone. Because that black will cover that, no worries at all, without any white on there. Okay, this time I'm going to be doing the white pearl. Here. Um, premium white pearl. So you give it a good shake. Um, Make sure you shake it because all the pearls and stuff stick to the bottom and that's all the cool bits so you want them all mixed in. Now I haven't opened this yet so this should be almost good to spray straight out of the airbrush. The other one I've used on another car so I'll probably let it sit around for a while. So I'm going to give that a good shake. Take your tack rag again. I just cut them up into small bits, they're actually quite big. 
and just go over your card lightly. Try not to push on it because otherwise the stickiness can go on your car or your model and it will stuff things up for you very shortly. So we'll do this. Now I haven't used this white pole before, so um, this could be interesting. I wanted to pretty curious to see how it looks. Now, um, because the pearl, it's important to have the same amount of pearl on all the panels that are going to be on the car. Um, if you paint this off the car, it won't match. Um, you can be really good and it still won't match. So what we do just place it on the car. I'll get rid of this glove and I'll grab a new one in a second. Grab some masking tape. And tape it from underneath. You just want it to stay there, you don't wanna, it's not permanent or anything. So once this is painted, um, you can come back in if you want to do pearl in the engine bay, you'll have to come back in and tape up the body and then spray the white pearl in the engine bay. It won't match the outside of the car, but um, realistically, you're not really going to notice that much. So make sure everything's down flat. That looks like it's sitting up a bit, a bit too high for some reason. There we go. As you can see, um, because it was a solid white, the colour actually matches perfect, so it's fine to paint them off the car if you're doing a solid colour. If you're doing a red car, probably do it like this, or just be super careful of how um, many coats you put on. Because red and yellow are a thin colour, and sometimes it can see through the paint. So, get the white pearl. Pour some in. I don't go right to the top in case I have to thin it. Um, I probably won't have to. We'll see. Yeah, it's a little bit thick. For my liking. Um, it's probably just a personal thing for me. I like to hang a bit thinner. Just put a little in. It's probably like a, I just put about a millimeter of thinner on top of that. If that, do a purge. There we go. I just want it to be like a thin dust coat, so I'll like to run it a little bit thinner. All right, now, with pearls, you gotta dust it. Like this. Like that. That's one coat. I'll let that dry for a sec. I'm just gonna do one more coat of the pearl. With pearls, if you, the further back you paint, um, it kind of makes, it gives the pearl, it's got little sparkles in it, I think, and they can, um, if you come back from the job a bit, they kind of stand up a little and it gives it a better pearl look. It's the same with metallic. If you're painting metallic, you paint back a bit and it'll get a better sparkle.
Now there we go. Hopefully you can see the pearly look to that. So um, I'm going to let that set settle down for about half hour. Then I'll come back and do the taping and the black. Okay, so what I've done now, um, there's a fly in here, is I waited about half hour and then I come back in and I've taped up the roof. Um, I've just taped, there's a, there's a chrome mold on this one. Um, that's a really good spot to tape up if there's a mold or something, if you're doing two turn. So I've taped up there, I've roughly taped up here on this front section. I'll just fix this a bit. Um, because this is chrome here, so I can just spray off here and it's not really gonna matter. Um, I used 3M 3mm tape to get this curve here. Um, this tape I use it a lot for airbrushing. Um, so I've always got it on hand, then I just use normal masking tape for the rest. When you choose masking tape, don't go for the tackiest one if you can. Um, go for a light tack, because it won't try to pull the paint back off. Now, I go again with my tack rag on the roof. I've given a little bit of sand here where I've stuffed up before. As you can see, it's come up all right. Um, it just shows you that when you have little incidents like that, they're easy to fix, so try not to stress about anything like that. Just think about how you want to fix it. Don't worry about how much damage is done. So now I'm in with a black, just premium jet black. Give it a shake. I'm just gonna get this little cat thing out. Just pour a bit in my cup. Again, a little for a test spray to see how it is. That's good this time. This time I'm going to go straight from the bottle. Because with the black it's a solid colour so um, with it should be fine. With the white pearl I want it to go on misty. So that's why I went with the bit of thinner. Okay so now yeah, same as before. I keep the fair distance back. Um, don't go too close because it will be part of the control. That should be enough. Today here is about 28 to 30 degrees so um, my paint's drying really fast. Here we go again. So that's okay. What I'll do now is this last coat, I'll just thin this down a little. When you thin it, it um, kind of allows you to go a bit smoother with the finish. I'll go a bit slower this time. Shall we get everywhere and that's it so I'll let that dry and then um, untape it and we'll go on to the next step which will be the clear coat okay fellas this is the last step of this paint job um, now we're up to the ultra clear 2k color set. So what do we do? Um, 
you have your user guide here if you want to read through that. I've used this before, so I won't be reading that today. Basically, you have two parts, two things of part A and one of part B. So basically, this kit is two to one. So two parts of this to one part of this. So that ends up being. I hope you know. What, yeah, I think you know what I mean. Um, and then we have some thinner as well. Um, use this thinner because it comes with a kit um, and it's designed for the 2K. So what we need is a cup cleaned out as good as possible. I even use my tack rag and get in there and just clean it out. It's just a plastic cup from from Woolies and you need to have some plastic or some plastic some rubber gloves sorry not plastic just latex gloves so drill gloves from wherever and they usually break like that so I'll grab another one And you also need some sort of mask. I'm just gonna use this, cause I'm a pretty, make sure you're in a very ventilated area. You should have a better mask than this, but that's all I've got at the moment. So now, we need two parts of part A, which is the lighter color sticker on the front. So if, to do a paint job, I generally go, I've got these little cups here. Um, I'm not, I think I got them from the reject shop or somewhere, I'm not quite sure. Um, they've got little measurements on there. I think they're for like cost serum or something. So, but they're not, they do melt with stuff in them eventually. So you gotta tip it in here, then tip it straight in the cup and throw these straight in the bin. So I'm gonna mix um, I'm just going to look at how much I want to do here because I don't know what you don't need a great deal so I'll go 15 mil of this I'm just holding it up to the light so it's a level you can do this with scales if you've got really accurate scales um, I think kitchen scales the digital ones might be Okay, you just go um, do it two to one by grams, I guess, if you want to do it that way. It's better to do it by volume, but if you can't find little cups, um, it's best to do it that way. So that's 15 of that. Chuck that in the bin. Put your lid back on. And then... Part B, shake it up. This is your hardener. You need a rag as well. So two to one, 15 of that one would be half of this volume, which would be seven and nine and a half. If you wanna make it easy, you can go 10 and, just make sure you don't drip it all over your model. I'm just trying to hold up to the light here. We're going to do dripping. So that's seven and a half. So we pour that into our part A. Scoop it out a bit. Give it a bit of a stir. Even when you're mixing this stuff, it really smells. So um, put a mask on. As soon as you can smell it, means you're breathing it in. And then with the thinner, I have found that it's meant to be, I think here these guide is 10% um, thinner. So 
that's 10 percent of the volume you've, you've mixed not of part a so going by that it's um 20 so that's about two or three mil of the thinner that you put in to mix the ratio that he suggests here um but i've been playing with it a little bit and i've been going a bit more thinner because i found it goes on smoother through an airbrush so i go about a similar 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 ratio to you just put part b so i'll just put 7.5 in part b so i will go 7.5 in this with the thinner and i'm pouring it like freaking everywhere so that's a ratio here now that's mixed up now get rid of these cups because they're going to melt if you're using the cups. Now give it a good stir. Make sure you stir it. Things could go wrong if you don't stir it. And it just blends in itself. And you'll find now it's quite runny. My mixture is runny because I went a bit thinner. Um, if you stick to the 10% it should be a bit thicker. If you're doing stuff like low rider paint jobs or things with GT stripes or whatever, um, go the 10% oh, the ten percent mix because um, it'll be thicker and it'll fill up your lines, like your paint edges, and then you can, you'll probably have to come back in later and sand and then do another coat. Okay, so, I'll just spray some thinners through this. Just gonna make sure your gun's really clean. Now, we need to get your tack rag again. These tack rags, you're gonna just pull them apart and fold them inside out because the tack, you know, it's like getting a new tack rag. So we'll do this again on the body. I have to come through and paint all the chassis for this later, so I'll just show you this body part. <laughs> While I was waiting for that to dry, I painted some wheels that are going on. So I'm going to clear coat them as I go. Now I put my mask on. Remember, do this in a well ventilated area, even if you are doing a mask. Don't do it around pets or kids or anything. Now the beauty of these cups is you can squish it like that. And it has a pouring spout. We'll do a test spray. Yep, that's pretty good. Okay, now, the same with, move all your other things because you don't want to overspray on your other parts. Because this stuff goes everywhere, it drifts through the air. So now, same as before, just do a quick, uh, normal run along it, pull trigger. And then the top. And then the roof. Now bring your body back in here. You probably have to fill this up after each coat. Now 
this time go a bit slower. I try and hold up here and so the light goes across the body so you can see where you've you actually don't go slower this time. And come back over where you've just been. And so again 50-50. Go quite and nice pace. I'll do the roof this time on the way over. The other side. As you can see, it's looking alright already. It's really windy here at the moment, so I'm getting a bit of crap in that. But um, I can sand that later and polish it if I want. So let that sit for about 10 or 15 minutes. <coughs> Basically, that's how you do it. Um, you can just build up coats and coats and coats and um, until you're happy with the amount on there. If you want to sand it, um, go for about four coats or so. It gives you room to, to move with depth of the clear when you're sanding. So that's about it. I'll let that sit for a while now and do some more coats. That's about all you need to know. So that's it. I'll um, finish this off and then I'll put a picture of it at the end. This is a complete car. I'll build it in the next few days and then I'll clean all the paintwork up a bit. As I said, I've got a little bit of dust in here. Um, I'll either wet and dry that back with 1200 and 2000 and then give it a polish. Or I'll wet, I'll wet and dry it with 1200 and then um, give another one or two coats of clear when the, when it's not windy outside and pushing all dust around in here. Alright, cool. Thank you.